Good evening and welcome to this evening's meeting. We're going to have the invocation by Reverend Ralph Thomas of Travelers Rest Baptist Church and Morrow. It will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please stand with me. Let us bow our heads. Our Father God is in the name of your son Jesus that we come to acknowledge and recognize you as God of our lives and God that created us. We thank you for this opportunity to stand and acknowledge that thou art God. Now Lord we ask in the name of Jesus that thou would bless this official meeting. We pray, God, that everything is done in decency and in order. We thank you for this board of commissioners. Thank you for our chairperson and all of those, oh God, who serve on this board. Bless them, if you will. Continue, God, to use them in the capacity that they serve in. We pray, God, that you will continue to Allow them, O oh God, to be strong leaders in this community of our county. That everything that they do, God, will serve the people of this county. And God, if you do that for us, we will definitely be so much grateful and so honored to give your name the praise and the glory for that. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good evening to everyone and welcome to the August 21st, 2018 regular business meeting. The first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Does any member want to offer any amendments? Uh, yes. Commissioner Hammer. Uh, yes, I would like to hold resolution 2018-91, number 13. I second that, Mr. Chair. Give me just a second, please. Okay, the motion is to hold 2018-91, you said? Correct. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Are there any further amendments? <coughs> Hearing none, may we have a motion to adopt the agenda with the approved amendment? Oh, so move. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The board has two proclamations to present this evening, recognizing our student athletes. The first congratulates the second place winners of the Georgia Recreation and Parks Association State Championship Baseball Tournament, the Morrow Lake City Park Orioles U10. If we can have that, if we can have the athletes come forward as well as coaches, family, friends, please come forward at this time as the commissioners join you for the presentation of the proclamation.
And now the reading of the proclamation. <coughs> Clayton County Board of Commissioners honors Morrow Lake City Park Orioles Under 10 League, Georgia Recreation and Parks Association State Championship Baseball Tournament, August 21st, 2018. Whereas the Clayton County Board of Commissioners is proud to recognize the Morrow Lake City Orioles, winning second place in the Georgia Recreation and Parks Association State Championship Baseball Tournament. The Morrow Lake City Park Orioles baseball team is composed of novice and outstanding players who displayed championship qualities throughout the tournament. This team is highly commended for their heartfelt and valuable efforts in bringing another win to Clayton County. Proudly, they have set a guide for young boys to strive for achieving greatness because delivering excellence gives you the best shot at the best future that is yours to create. Georgia Recreation and Parks Association Baseball League is a time-honored tradition offering our children an opportunity to learn about the importance of essential life lessons. And whereas the under-10 Morrow Lake City Orioles youth baseball team completed the 2017 Clayton County baseball season undefeated, as a result, they earned a berth in the Georgia Recreation and Parks Association State Championship Baseball Tournament. The tournament was held in Bainbridge, Georgia. The Orioles, led by head coach Demetrius Williams, worked their way through the three-day tournament into the championship game where they finished in second place. Assistant coaches Dedrick Murphy, Darian Murphy, and Desmond Lewis, parents and the Morrow Lake City community is incredibly proud of their efforts. And the under 10 Morrow Lake City Orioles second place baseball team consists of Isaiah Davis, Caleb Harper, Jacoby Hendricks, Tyrese Jenkins, Josiah King, Jamarcus Knox, Devin Murphy, Dylan Murphy, Josiah Patrick, Cortez Redding, Kenneth KJ West Jr., Dalen Williams, and Donovan Williams. Whereas Clayton County Board of Commissioners extends its appreciation to the coaches for teaching these young men more than just the rules of the game, but the importance of their character and integrity on and off the field. Not only were they victorious, but throughout the competition they were courteous, disciplined, and confident in their ability, as well as who they are as young men. The memories from this experience for the team and their families will last a lifetime. Therefore, I, Sona Singleton Gregory, Commissioner of District 1, on behalf of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, officially acknowledge the talents, skills, teamwork, sportsmanship, and successes of the Morrow Lake City Orioles, and on behalf of our citizens, do hereby extend this expression of our pride in this prestigious milestone achieved by players and coaches. In witness thereof, I have here unto set my hand and caused the seal of Clayton County, Georgia to be affixed this 21st day of August in the year 2018. Our next proclamation congratulates Rex Park Pirates U12 for being the championship winners of the Georgia Recreation and Parks Association State Championship Baseball Tournament. And these are the U-12 championship winners.
And now the reading of the proclamation. Clayton County Board of Commissioners honors Rex Park Pirates under 12 league. Georgia Recreation and Parks Association State Championship Baseball Tournament, August 21st, 2018. Whereas Clayton County Board of Commissioners are proud to recognize the championship winners of the 2018 Georgia Recreation and Parks Association State Championship Baseball Tournament. The Rex Parks Pirates baseball team is composed of novice and experienced players. This team has proudly set a precedent in Clayton County and the state of Georgia by achieving the championship. Georgia Recreation and Parks Association Baseball League is a time-honored tradition offering our children an opportunity to learn about the importance of essential life lessons. And whereas the U-12 Rex Parks Pirates youth baseball team completed the 2017 Clayton County baseball season undefeated. In addition, the team won the county's postseason tournament and earned a berth in the Georgia Recreation and Parks Association State Championship Baseball Tournament. The tournament was held in Tifton, Georgia. The Rex Park Pirates, led by head coach Dennis Colbert, dominated the three-day competition, winning the competition and defeating Grady County. Assistant coaches Richard Jackson, Richard Stevens, Gary Turner. Parents and the Rex Park community are proud to salute these players and their championship achievement. And the under-12 Rex Parks Pirates championship baseball team consists of Keelan Burns, Raymond Clark, Jamari Hardney Muhammad, Kendall Jackson, Gabrielle Johnson, Jaden Johnson, Tremarius Jones, Ryan Stevens, Jeremiah Turner, Terrence Pree, and Monterius Zachary. Whereas Clayton County Board of Commissioners extends its appreciation to the coaches for teaching these young men more than just the rules of the game, but the importance of their character and integrity on and off the field. Not only were they victorious, but throughout the competition, they were courteous, disciplined, and confident in their ability and who they are as young men. The memories from this experience for the team and their families will last a lifetime. Therefore, I, Sonna Singleton Gregory, Commissioner of District 1, on behalf of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, officially acknowledge the talents, skills, teamwork, sportsmanship, and successes of the Rex Park Pirates. And on behalf of our citizens, do hereby extend this expression of our pride in this prestigious milestone achieved by players and coaches. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of Clayton County, Georgia to be affixed this 21st day of August in the year 2018. The board will hear two proclamations, two the first presentation, the wayfinding and signage plan review as presented by Mr. Eric Bosman from Kimley Horn Associates. Just give us one more second and let them filter on that. Okay, sir, please proceed. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, on behalf of the Airtropolis Atlanta Community Improvement District and our project manager, Mr. Stan Reese, I want to thank you for giving us a few minutes this evening to update you on the Airtropolis Atlanta wayfinding and signage uh, package that we are under design for. As you may know, in 2017, the Airtropolis Atlanta Community Improvement Districts, which include both the Fulton County District and the Clayton County District, completed their first ever master plan. One of the four major elements of that master plan was to create a wayfinding and signage package that would enhance the brand perception and wayfinding ability throughout the district and also unite the five municipalities and two counties and aid in fostering our economic development efforts throughout the Aerotropolis and South Metro region. The wayfinding signage concept that you're going to see this evening was developed by the Community Improvement District with input from the cities and the counties and is expected to be implemented in partnership with the Aerotropolis Atlanta Alliance and with partnering municipalities who hope to see this signage uh, take place within their communities. Now the process that we followed over the last several months was a three-step process. It included a review of existing signage and branding within the Aerotropolis District stakeholder interviews with each of our partner municipalities, uh, and uh, development of a stakeholder committee that worked on us with a consistent basis throughout this process. The second phase included the development of five different preliminary alternatives, and then the third phase, phase 1C, was the development of the preferred alternative that I'm going to show you this evening. Now, throughout the development of the five preliminary concepts and the preferred alternative that I'm going to show you this evening, the intent of this effort was to create a wayfinding signage package that would complement the wayfinding at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport and each of our individual cities and counties. And this signage is intended to be focused on our major interstates and highways, so I-85, I-75, I-285 at our major interchanges, of which there are 12 interchanges off of the interstates in the Aerotropolis District and off of the interstates, but only in those interjurisdictional activity centers, like Phoenix Boulevard and Forest Parkway, uh, Camp Creek Parkway and Virginia Avenue, where we have multiple jurisdictions that have ownership over those areas. This wayfinding signage is not intended to be in our traditional downtown areas. In our traditional downtown areas, there's already a strong brand within those areas where we don't want to brand the Aerotropolis District. The district is intended to be branded along the highways and then to celebrate each of our individual downtowns, municipalities, and counties once we get visitors and investment into the district. So that's where this signage is intended to take place. So what you're going to see this evening is a recommended concept. We are not ready to move to construction. Where we're at right now is we're visiting each of the municipalities and counties to get your input on this package. And if the CID and Alliance move forward, we will continue this fall with refinement of the design and then move towards the construction documents and come back at a later date to talk about placement of these signs and potential cost and partnership arrangements to provide them. So what you're seeing tonight is just the preferred concept that we would like to move forward with. Essentially, we didn't boil it down to one sign. We boiled it down to three elements. And the reason that it's three elements is because if you think about these interstate interchanges and these multi-jurisdictional activity centers off of the interchanges, we have a variety of settings. In some places, we're going to have a very limited plot of land. We're going to need the sign to be fairly tall so that cars that are whizzing down the interstate at 65 miles an hour or on some days sitting on the interstate at 25 miles an hour will be able to see them and be able to read them. In other cases, we're going to have larger plots of land, so we may be able to do something that's more visible and horizontal in nature. So I'm going to show you three different elements. The, the slide that you see before you has two of those elements. One is the vertical pylon, and two is the sculpture that is intended to be plane-like uh, and is reminiscent of an airplane wing, but also variable and flexible to fit to different locations. So in this case, the vertical pylon is made of a metal aluminum or stainless steel. It has raised letters that will be lit during the evening, and then the vertical pylon is complemented by the structure, by the sculpture. Now the sculpture in its, of itself is made of three pieces that are stacked on top of one another. They are paper airplane-like, but they are also metal and able to be lit during the evening. So depending on what angle you're seeing the sculpture, it will look a little bit different depending on how the three pieces are assembled 
and how the light bounces off of the sculpture. That's part of the intention of this package, knowing that these are potentially going to be at 12 different interchanges. We want something that's not, not gonna look the same everywhere, but has a little bit of flexibility and variability to it. So there's the pylon and the sculpture. In some cases, if we don't have enough room for the sculpture, we can just do the vertical pylon, which is also a less expensive investment. And in some cases where we have a longer space or wider space available rather than the vertical pylon, we have the opportunity to do the raised letters. Now along an interchange, these letters would be about 24 to 36 inches tall. That's what it takes for them to be seen from a distance on the, the interstate or on a highway. You'll notice this is the horizontal with the sculpture. It can also be provided without the sculpture. Now those couple of options are what you might see along the interstate or the highway. We also uh, have built the signage package in a way that each of those items can be reduced in scale so that when you get off the interstate and you get into an activity center like Jonesboro Road or Phoenix Boulevard, they would be scaled down and the base of every one of these sculptures, regardless of location, would have the municipality that they're located in on the base of the sculpture. So whether that is City of College Park, Clayton County, or any of our other jurisdictions, we want to celebrate and recognize each of the individual jurisdictions as well as call attention to the Aerotropolis District as a whole. So again, as I mentioned, this is a proposal at this point. We're seeking each of our partners input into this package and if we move forward, it will be this fall with refinement of the design based on the input that we've received from each of our partners um, and getting into more of a costing and quantification exercise to look at exact locations and potential cost of these designs. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from board members? Uh, yes, the cost. Will that be passed on to each, uh, I guess, maybe county or entity that's a part of Aerotropolis? So it, it hasn't been fully decided yet, but based on the number of potential <coughs> signs that might be out there, the CID is looking to contribute. They're looking to partner with the Aerotropolis Alliance, mm -hmm. and I think they will want some level of contribution from the municipalities. So we don't expect the municipalities to foot the entire cost, mm -hmm. but once we get a full understanding of the number and the cost, we'd like to work on a partnership arrangement where each might share a little bit uh, in the construction and implementation cost. Okay, even if you're part of the CID? You yes, because the CID is funded by the commercial property owners, so mm -hmm. that would be using the, the property owner money. I think they would like to see a little bit of investment from the municipalities, but they've not set a figure or determined to what degree that share would be appropriate. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. In the final presentation for this evening, the proposed customer service concierge group concept as presented by Mr. Patrick Ejiki, Director of Community Development Department. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, good evening. Um, my presentation this evening is about customer service and efficiency in business license processing, building permitting, and also all the zoning processes. We had uh, an occasion to separate processes in our department and create the Office of Planning and Zoning. Uh, unfortunately, we ran into customer service issues, uh, customers not knowing exactly that this took place, and also the crossing of lines in terms of who's supposed to do what. So we are we're, we're trying to we, we, we would like to create a concept called customer service concierge. And the customer service concierge, it's a way to centralize, a way to centralize our functions, our messaging. The concierge, if you think about this, if you go to a high-end dealership to fix your car, you do not talk to the mechanics in the back you talk to the service rep. So this concept allows this customer service concierge group to handle all communications, all uh, responses from the department to the customers. They will also keep abreast of the processes that are going on with the application and inform the customers in a timely basis. So we feel that by keeping the customer aware of what is happening. 
calling them and making sure that all the processes are, are being followed, we will achieve a customer experience that our customers will really like. Half of it is them knowing what is happening to their application. So that is part of what this concept is. So. The concept looks like this in diagram, where, where you have the round blue object. It's a central point for all the applications to come in, all the questions to come in. They handle everybody above, all the stations above the blue line are the folks that are handling the communication. As you can see, we have planning, land development, um, building permits, business license. They are, this group, this co customer concierge group, handles all that function. Then the, the diagram you see below the blue dot are the folks actually doing the review, doing the inspection, and doing the processing. As you can see, all the departments that have to touch an application as it's applicable. So this is the concept where we are centralizing our messaging and making sure that all our customers are attended to and we're getting the results that we are seeking. I also would like to use that example of being the air traffic controller. They know what is coming in and they know what is going out. They can tell when a process is stalled. So this group will be the group that will make sure that we achieve the kind of customer service that we are seeking. We took the concept, the customer service concept, and operationalized it to get into the details of how it will work. And unfortunately, I know that the copies you have, you can see it, but where you have all the red text, CSC, are points in the process of any type of application where this group will intervene, in, interject, and resolve issues. When an issue arises that they can now resolve by this group, it's escalated to me. So we are abreast of what is happening. Right now, we struggling to do that. But this concept allows us to reorganize our department to be able to do this. This is what is required. Um, all good ideas require some little bit of uh, restructuring. This is good in a way because we are proposing to do this with the existing staff across the two across the two departments, both planning and zoning and community development. Uh, it will require to the, the layout of the diagram that you see to have those five positions to do this. Um, that's what it will take us to do. So we will have one concierge manager, uh, one concierge, um, two concierge associates two, uh, one associate one, and an office assistant. This group can process from start to finish if have to, if they have to. Their jobs is also involve making calls to customers, making sure the customers are treated very well. If we have a code missing, um, a code issue to explain, they can explain it. So the 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 members of this group at least half of them or more will have a planning background because most of what we do have to get through zoning first before we actually start processing. And what we are talking about here is not zoning, the ones you guys vote on. We're talking about zoning as it relates to development, two different things. It's an interpretation of setbacks and requirements and conditions. It is not where we are doing the job of the zoning administrator, or we are doing the job that we are contracting out to do. This is strictly land development, building, 
type reviews for zoning. On the right side, uh, on your copies, you probably see the details. Where are we talking about some of the equipment that we will need? We really want to do this the right way. We're looking at providing um, this group with some type of um, uniform that when you walk into our space, you will know who to ask questions. They will carry cell phones that are 24 seven so that if issues are arising, they should be able to um, address it. So this presentation tonight is to share what I feel is a common sense approach to what we are doing and it's, go it's going to be done within the, um, the boundaries of what we have within the two, the two departments right now. And I'm hoping that this presentation can shed some more light on what we're trying to do. And the plan is to bring it back for your vote next board hearing. With that, I'm open for questions. All right, any questions for Mr. Jiki? Um, yes. Commissioner. With this process, what is the timeline? If someone comes in uh, with an application or whatever, what's the timeline from the beginning to end? We are guaranteeing 10 working days to issue you a permit if you walk in. There is an exception. If you are applying for alcohol license that requires police background check and, and GBI processes, that might take longer. Outside of that, it's guaranteed that we will issue you a permit or a license within 10 working days. Is, is that where the phone calls will be made to inform? That's when, yeah, the, the delays are where we, um, the way I have explained it to staff, sometimes we are on defense. We are waiting for things to come. Mm -hmm. But this plan, we go on offense. We seek out issues in the system and call the people and resolve it because we will constantly be mindful of our 10 days time timeline. So you're calling other? We, we, we're calling the applicant to resolve an issue. Right, okay. But we call in other departments that might okay. be involved in the review to say, hey, this is where we are, what is the issue, so we can relate it to the applicant. Okay. Yeah. And also, in this plan, we're introducing something new, something we didn't do initially. We're going to start going to the home builders meeting, the Metro Home Builders meeting. It is the building association for Metro Atlanta. That's where you see all the members. They bring their issues from different counties to their forum. <laughs> we get to hear. It's not a pleasant meeting to go to. I know. But <laughs> <laughs> is that a pleasant sure. meeting to go to? But we plan to go there. Okay. If this plan, this concept gets approved, we plan to come for, to every commission district. Because remember, our citizens are also our customers. They do build things. They do do things. Yeah. We, we will have meetings for each commissioner. We will find, uh, we'll schedule time to come out under your office to have a, a discussion, have an explanation of how this will work and who they're supposed to call. This group will also have a new telephone number that is not the regular line that we use right now. So we really want to make sure we don't have any issues when this go live. The plan for this is to go live in January. But we'll start training folks right now, making sure everybody setting up policies, making sure everybody understands what this means. What we're really trying to do is have a clear understanding of what an application means to a builder, to a land developer. Because sometimes when you don't make that connection, it's like a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But these are investments that they're making. So we want to make sure that we can talk to them, understand the issues, and be able to deal with it. Yeah, I commend you for bringing forth this concept, uh, just so that I have a clear understanding here, is that the customer service concierge, once assigned a customer, will stick with that customer until the process has been completed for two, 10 days is what you're saying. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. They'll yes. be returning phone calls, troubleshooting, 
making sure they have what they need to get the process completed and out the door. Exactly. Whoever in this group that makes that call to that customer finishes with that call. The only time they might not finish, if they have an emergency, I will intervene or their manager will intervene and explain to the customer where, why he or she is hearing from somebody else. Okay. Is that a min minimum or a maximum of 10 days? A maximum. Okay. Yeah, we just keep on repeating that 10 days. Cause 10 days, <laughs> 10 days, 10 days. 10 <laughs> days, all right? Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Eugene. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the board will now consider the consent agenda. All right, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. All right. Opposed? It's unanimous. Chuck Reed, legal department. Would you like me to take them one by one? Uh, how about taking nine and ten together unless any board members see a problem with that, and then let's take the remainder one by one. Okay, first is um, Ordinance 2018 which is an ordinance adopted under the Home Rule Powers granted to Clayton County, pursuant to Article 9, Section 2, Paragraph 1 of the Constitution of the State of Georgia of 1983 amending the Clayton County Code of Ordinances, specifically relevant sections of the Clayton County Public Employee Eligible Deferred Compensation Plan, permitting in-service withdrawals by eligible participants to repeal conflicting laws, ordinances, and resolutions, and to provide an effective date of this ordinance and for other purposes. This is a second reading. And then I have uh, Ordinance 2018-87, which is an ordinance adopted under the Home Rule Powers granted to Clayton County pursuant to Article 9, Section 2, Paragraph 1 of the Constitution of the State of Georgia of 1983, amending the Clayton County Code of Ordinances, specifically relevant sections of the Clayton County Georgia Public Employee Retirement System, to clarify that the term average monthly compensation includes wages earned while employed reported on paychecks issued after separation from service. To clarify that the term employees means full-time employees except for certain categories of employees, excuse me, certain categories of individuals who are specifically identified. To clarify the meaning of the term safety personnel, to clarify the term eligible employees, to include court reporters and superior court law clerks, to amend the term vesting service, to consider only contiguous periods of service except as specified to change the rules related to suspension of benefits on rehire, to require that rehire participants who choose to repay benefits under the plan do so within 24 months of the plan administrative notice that says 12 here, but on the ordinance it says okay. 24, uh, of such repayment opportunity to provide a death benefit to a participant's spouse if such participant separated from service after age 50 with a rested benefit to make other clarifying revisions to repeal conflicting laws, ordinances, and resolutions, and to provide an effective date of this ordinance and for other purposes. And this is the first reading. Okay. So we, we need a motion on both of those still. Yes. And we'll take a motion on the second reading as well, correct? That's correct. So All right, is, there is there a motion to approve? Is there a motion? In the first and the second reading. The first one is a, sec it's a, second, it's a second reading. reading. And then, um, so once we approve them both, the second one will be done with. And the, and the the first one will be done with. The second one you have to bring back for another reading. That's correct. But we can approve it at the same time, and the first one will be over and done. That's correct. So is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? I don't have a question. I just uh, the clarification. I, I just want to make sure because my uh, paperwork shows twelve months, and I just want to make sure it's twenty four months that uh, an employee will have to pay back. The ordinance attached to the back of the um, resolution of the legislative request it does take 24 months. Section 17. Okay, I just want to make sure because my information has 12. Yeah, that synopsis I think was written, that, that, that legislative request was done wrong. Okay. You good, Mr. Reed? 
All right, any other questions, statements? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, it's unanimous. I have uh, resolution 2018-89, which is a resolution by the Clayton County Board of Commissioners identifying certain state legislative matters to be addressed during the 2019 legislative session of the Georgia General Assembly. It's authorized the chairman to perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution, to provide an effective date of this resolution and for other purposes. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Shenanigans. I have resolution 2018-90, which is a resolution authorizing the abolishment of the Clayton County Department of Economic Development to authorize the chairman to perform all other acts necessary to accomplish the intent of the resolution, to authorize, uh, it should say, the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense, to authorize the human resources director to perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution, to provide an effective date of this resolution and for other purposes. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? A second, Mr. Chair. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay is 3 1 and passes. That concludes um, our resolutions. We do not need an executive. Okay, we uh, uh, like an uh, executive session on litigation. Executive <laughs> session litigation. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, personnel? next. In personnel? Do we need personnel? I think so. Litigation <coughs> and personnel. Mr. Chairman, the next four items are board appointments. Okay, first appointment is to the mental health developmental Disabilities and Addictive Diseases Community Service Board to fill the unexpired term of Shirley Hines. Term expires on June 30th, 2021. Any recommendations? I would like to recommend Melissa Prescott Crawford. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Is she unanimous? Next appointment is to the Solid Waste Management Authority Board to fill the expired term, expiring term of Victor Lett. Senior, the term is for four years, expiring on August 20th, 2022. Any recommendations? Mr. Chair, I'd like to um, recommend Ms. Flora Marie Myers of Morrow, Georgia, to fill that position. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? She Can I ask her to stand up, Ms. Myers? Okay. Solid Since we got folks standing up, Miss, uh, where's Miss <laughs> Melissa Crawford? At? I thought she was, there she go. All right. So thank you both. All right. Next appointment is to the Tourism Authority to fill the expiring term of Gina McCombs. The term is four years, expiring on September 1st, 2022. Any recommendations? Okay. We'll hold that until next. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I would like to reappoint. Ms. McCombs. Okay, I'll second that motion. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Last appointment is to the Zone and Advisory Group to fill the expiring term of Herman Turner. The term is three years expiring on September 2nd, 2021. Any recommendations? I'd like to reappoint Mr. Turner to continue serving. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the next four items are zoning public hearings. The first, the applicant is Clayton Fagan, LLC, and the request is for a signature of approval of the final plat for the Fagan Woods subdivision. The property is zoned PUD. The planning and zoning staff, as well as ZAG, are recommending approval of the signature only. This is District 4, Vice Chairman Edmondson's district. Will the applicant please come forward? Podium is yours, sir. Could, could I? Could I ask? Yes. If you give me just one second, I have a question for our zoning administrator. Mm -hmm. It's small print. I couldn't see anywhere where this final plat deviated from the preliminary plat that was approved a few years ago. Could you there were anything of significance? No, this this plat is consistent with the preliminary plan. That would be the normal routine. The, the zoning advisory group 
would approve the preliminary, preliminary plat, then it would be forwarded to the Board of Commissioners for adoption of the right of way. Once the final, once Hasn't been any changes. Okay. Any changes? H haven't been any changes? None that I know of. <coughs> <coughs> Chairman, I recommend approval. Is there a second? A second. Well, Mr. Hancock, if he's going to go ahead and make the uh, motion, do we still we still need to have because it's a yes, public you hearing. Need to make sure everybody else absolutely. Is oh, absolutely. So, with that being said, is there anybody for or against the applicant's request? Anybody here like to speak for or against it? Okay, and with that being said, I believe there was a motion and a second. Unless there's any questions, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. The next zone in public hearing, the applicant is John Saunders. The request is for a conditional use permit for a service station. <coughs> the subject property is located at 6141 Highway 85, Riverdale, Georgia. The planning and zoning staff recommends approval with conditions. Zoning Advisory Group recommends denial. This is District 2, Commissioner Hambrick's district. Yes, sir. Please state your name. Please. My name is John Saunders. Address is 453 Creekview Drive, Ella J, Georgia. I'm here uh, requesting approval for a emission testing station at the subject property. Uh, during the process, uh, you know, the mission testing station meets all the code requirements and setbacks uh, required by the county but during the process there was a third party business on site uh, that had some issues with uh, doing work in the rear alley of the building that impacted uh, our case so uh, we've worked with the property owner to resolve the issues that staff had with the, uh, the tire shop in the rear of this property uh, the zoning board voted to deny because there was a trailer that was placed in the rear of the building. Since the zoning uh, meeting, we've worked with the property owner to resolve that issue and remove the trailer in question. So I believe that we should meet all the requirements that the county has. Uh, the zoning board recommended to deny it because of those reasons, but we've since resolved. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Saunders by the board members? Okay, is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak for or against this applicant's request? Anybody like to speak for or against? Okay, Commissioner Hambrick. Uh, yes, I would like to know from the um, administrator if those things have been done. What staff uh, negotiated with the applicant in terms of addressing the circulation issue Again, the, this request is for an emission station. The emission station is on the opposite side of the property and, it's cl it's, uh, and it meets all the, the, all the code requirements. However, it shares access and, sh and, and property arrangement with uh, other businesses, a convenience store, a hair salon, and an attire shop. The tire shop uh, of recent times have been, do have been performing tire service work on the outside of the building. Uh, staff felt like this presented a circulation issue because there was no point in place for this work to occur and this could interfere with, with traffic moving in and out of the site. So in working with the property owner, the property owner agreed to construct a canopy to the rear of the building. This canopy would become their work area. All work would be performed under that canopy. Therefore, they, they would remove the the likelihood of them working in, in locations that no one could control because now they have a designated area. The inside bay that you would normally think they would work in is filled with, with stocks and supplies. So the only option they had was, was, was to extend this canopy to make that a work area. And the trailers on the rear are, are planned to be removed. My understanding they haven't been removed by today. They have not or have? Well, the applicant have to clarify, but my last word is that they were working on having them to remove by the end of the week, but they could not get them out by this meeting date. I will state that the trailers to the rear of the building still leaves room enough for circulation around the building, but the Planning Commission felt like, mm, why are they even there? So that's why we have uh, results from the Planning Commission as, as relates to a denial. So we do have, uh, have plans to remove the trailer. We just were not able to secure somebody to come and move it uh, in time for the meeting today. The property owner has told me that it'll be done by the end of the month. 
and I personally will be permitting the canopy structure. If you approve this conditional use permit, I'll be going in for a building permit, applying for a building permit for the installation of the structure, and I will apply for the canopy building permit at that same time. So we're just asking for approval conditioned on those two circumstances, removal of the trailer and the installation of the canopy. Well, at this time, until those things are done or whatever, I'm uh, recommending denial. Is there a way that we can uh, change your, your mind if we, uh, again, if we make it condition, conditioned on the fact that we have the uh, canopy structure and the trailer removed so that I wouldn't have to come back through the process again? Because I've been to the, this would be my fifth time down here for this case. Well, administrator. Commissioner Hambrick, it's, it's your will to uh, make whatever decision you think is appropriate. There could be a, a opportunity to defer the decision. Then they could conduct these things on site. And once those things are actually in place and those trails are removed, and then that could remove any questions that you may have. And at that time, you could readdress your, con your concerns for the site. Okay. And, uh, well, I would like to defer. Okay. Another time. I appreciate it. Okay. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Oh, wait. Just to be clear for the record, we're deferring only the decision. There will not be another public hearing, so it won't be necessary to publish it in and deferring it till the next meeting. Right, providing those things right. are taken right. care of. Okay. Thank you. Question? Mm -hmm. I, I have a question, ma'am. The, uh, the zoning request, as I'm reading it, is for a 90 square foot modular building with a canopy for emission testing building. Everything seems like we've been talking about is for tires and tire repair. So the canopy wouldn't be for tires or tire repair anyways? Or are you proposing to use something else? My, I, my, I simply got caught up, you know, when staff brought these issues, this, these issues with the tire shop were brought up late in the process of the condition. You know, my case got caught up in these issues with the tire shop. Um, I'm not really clear on why the county is holding up my conditional use permit due to these issues with the tire shop because they can be resolved outside of uh, my conditional use permit request. It's a separate third party. But I've been working with staff, the property owner, and the tire shop kind of as an intermediary because I'm forced to do so by the process. So, uh, you know, my conditional use permit meets all the requirements, but it's being held up because of these issues with the tire shop. And I keep this, again, this will be my fifth time down, down here, I believe, for, for meetings. It keeps getting deferred because of issues outside of my control with the tire shop. Thank you. <coughs> OK, thank you, sir. OK, appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, we need to take the vote. No, we did not. Did, did mm -hmm. I thought we you? Yeah, you deferred it. Right. One of those deferred conditions, and then you suck it. To, uh, to defer it. Uh -huh. yeah. And vote to defer. Okay. For decision Thank only. And yeah, we took a vote on for, for it. For clarification. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For clarification, that was for the meeting in September? Yes. For next month? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. That meeting date would be September 18th. That's for the viewing mm -hmm. public, for the record. That would be. Uh, the September 18th regular business meeting that this zoning public hearing would be heard again. Okay, thank you. Chairman, then, I'm sorry. No, just so we're clear about the record, the public hearing will not happen again. All that was deferred according to the motion was with the vote. vote. So there will not be a public hearing has been conducted, and you can do it either the 18th or the, uh, or the first, first meeting. meeting, either okay. one. Yeah. But, well, but I we prefer to do the first meeting. Which one. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Well, we'll, oh, we'll still leave it at the 18th to give them enough time to get those things done. Thank you, and thank you for the correction, County Attorney Hancock. That is for a decision only on that date, September 18th. The next zoning public hearing, the applicant is Dr. Panda. The request is for a conditional use permit. And this is for a place of worship. The subject property is located at 7291 Davidson Parkway North, Stockbridge, Georgia. 
The Planning and Zoning staff, as well as Zach, recommend approval with condition. This is District 1, Commissioner Gregory's District. Yes, sir. Is this the good old evening. Golden Corral restaurant? Yes. Yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Willow Cervetti, and I'm here to represent... Please speak uh, into the mic, sir. Uh, my, my name is Viral Severi. I'm here to represent uh, Gayatri Parivar Yugnirman at Langtel's uh, application for use of uh, property at uh, 7291 Davidson Parkway North uh, for the place of worship. Um, and we would like to be the integral part of the uh, city and the county to give the residents the opportunity to uh, come and uh, worship and also uh, give the opportunity to uh, younger kids to educate themselves on the traditions and the culture. So I would uh, like my humble request to the board to please uh, give us the uh, permission and uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions for this gentleman? All right, is there anybody here that would like to speak for or against this applicant's request? Anybody speak? For or against? Commissioner Gregory. Ms. Fan, what did the zoning advisory group recommend any conditions for this? No conditions were recommended. The the zoning ordinance has developmental standards that pertain particularly to a place of worship that address setbacks and issues, but here we're dealing with an existing structure. So the primary concerns here is that adequate parking be provided be provided on the site which there w there is available parking and adequate parking based on the, co the uh, capacity of the building, but no conditions since we're dealing with an existing structure and the development standards are in the ordinance that would pertain to anything that was new construction. Okay. Well, with that, I would um, agree with the Zoning Advisory Group for, for approval of this petition. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. In the last zoning public hearing for this evening, the applicant is Washbox LLC. The request is for a conditional use permit for the development of an express car wash. The subject property is located at 5608 Riverdale Road, College Park, Georgia. The planning and zoning staff, as well as ZAG, are recommending approval with a condition. This is District 2, Commissioner Hambrick's district. Good evening. My name is Cecil Francis. I'm the um, principal for Washbox LLC. Uh, our, our company operates express car washes. We have one location on Moreland Avenue, downtown Atlanta. Um, this particular property is at 5608 Riverdale Road, uh, located at the corner of Riverdale Road and Flat Shoals. Um, I brought some visual aids. I don't know if I can. property uh, was a gas station in the 50s or 60s, if I'm not mistaken. It's been abandoned and vacant since then um, for as long as I can remember. I went to high school down the street, so that's at least 20 years ago. It's been a, a defunct gas station. Uh, it's been the home of uh, barbecue outdoor barbecue restaurants um, and illegal car washes and there, were re there was recently a business there that sold tires that I was I think was forced to shut down uh, because of the condition of the property so the property has been an eyesore for many many years um, and what I'm proposing is to redevelop the property uh, into a new express car wash okay are there any questions from board members. All right, hearing none. Anyone here like to speak for or against this request? Please come forward. Take the podium, please. Evening, Chairman, Commissioners, Rob Leatherwood, Clayton County. I was looking at this, uh, this zoning proposal. I know there's a few car washes uh, in the area. There's one that's about 0.2 miles down called Dirt Busters um, that kind of work out of what used to be a gas station uh, back in the day. 
Across the street from that is a self-service car wash that's been closed down for quite a while. Um, and then down at Norman Drive from the high school is another self-service car wash. So potentially that could put three car washes within one mile. Um, I'm not against having a nicer car wash, something that somebody can easily pull in and out. But given that it's right next door to West Clayton Elementary School, um, is there any issues with child safety with children walking on the sidewalk uh, to get to the schools if vehicles are actively pulling in and out uh, from that business? Uh, the other thing is there's currently a MARTA bus stop uh, at that location as well. So I know a lot of people hang out um, in that area. So um, again, I don't want to say I'm against something like this, um, but I just kind of have more questions than I do answers uh, as far as approving this type of business at that exact location at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Come forward. Yes, take the podium, please. Good evening, my name is Mike Ferrara and I own the car wash on Norman Drive and I've been there for many years. And I looked at this project and I'm not against new development, but as the previous speaker said, we have one car wash where the shutdown and business in that area is not that great. And I'm concerned that we're gonna have too many car washes in the area and we're gonna wind up having more vacant properties. The other thing I wanna say is I'm very familiar with the express concept that this gentleman proposes and I feel that this property is way too small to accommodate the stacking. If you're familiar with the car wash on Upper Riverdale Road in 1941, there's an express car wash called Tidal Wave, it used to be. That car wash used to back out all the way into the shopping center. You might have 40 or 50 cars in line. When I look at this project, when I look at this project and I see eight cars coming in and leaving, crossing the path to get to the auto cashier, and maybe five or six or seven cars are stacking, this is gonna back up into Riverdale Road the way it is. So that's my opinion. Um, so thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? <coughs> You'd like a rebuttal, sir? Uh, yes. Um, the car wash that's .2 miles away, if I can show you what what the car wash that's 0.2 miles away looks like versus what we plan to, to develop, what we plan to put there on the corner. Also, we've already been in contact because one of the major challenges of this site, the reasons it's been vacant for 50 plus years is that the site has no access to public sewer. So it was a very big challenge to um, develop a plan to get access to public sewer for this site. And what we've done is we've already reached out to the Clayton County Board of Education and discuss the project with them, and they have agreed for a fee to provide us an access easement on there to go through their property to access public sewer. You said the Board of Education? Clayton County. You said the Board of Education or Water Authority? No, the Board of Education. For an easement? Yes, sir. Okay. Because it's West, it's, uh, West Clayton Elementary School. It's close to it, yes. Yeah, so we have to go through their property to access the, the, yeah, so they would have to uh, approve any easements or access to their property. So we've already talked to them and discussed the project with them and they've agreed to do that for a fee. Uh, and the other self-serve car washes are a uh, very older, con they're a much older concept. They're a drive-in concept that's um, dated. So more than there being a lot of car washes in the area, the concept is old so people don't use it anymore. So their business isn't well for those. I don't even think they're open actually. I think they're closed. I don't think they're being used anymore. So the closest car wash to our location is the car wash you, you know, that I just showed you. Commissioner Hamburg. Okay, after hearing um, the presentation and the, um, the comments from the public, at this particular time, I am recommending denial. Is there a second? A second. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Sorry. The board will now hear public comments. Citizens will be given three minutes maximum time limit to speak before the Excuse board of commissioners. Uh, Please. One, se one second, uh, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. The public comment that was voted on to be at the end of the meeting after executive session. 
No, it was public comment. It was at the end of the agenda. That's right. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. That's correct. And the agenda, this is the end of the agenda, except for executive session. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he is correct, uh, Madam Clerk. So with that being said, there's a, a need for us to go into executive <coughs> session. We will have public comment after we come out. Please, keep order, please. All right, so public comment will be heard after executive session. Uh, there's a motion, uh, is there a motion going to executive session? So on litigation and personnel, Mr. Chairman. On, can you, on personnel and litigation. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Y'all have a good day. A motion to reconvene. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Uh, second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Shenanigans. Madam Clerk. The board will now hear public comments. Citizens will be given three minutes maximum oh, time. Hold on a second, Madam Clerk. I'm sorry. Oh. Doesn't, yeah, come, I want you to come on and present. One first. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, pursuant to your direction in executive session, we present to you the settlement of a claim by C.W. Matthews Contracting Company, Inc., involving the Anvil Block Road project. There was overruns in that project resulting from the delays in, re in removal of the utilities. So they were required to spend Hold additional. Hold on, Mr. Mr. Hancock. Sure. This, somebody's talking and I can't hear them. Ms. Spang, Span. Thank you. Go ahead and proceed. Yes, sir. They were they were required to expend additional sums to complete that project. Uh, the uh, COO and the director were able to negotiate with them a reduced claim from what was originally a claim of just under four hundred thirty-five thousand dollars to a. Uh, an amount of $267,070.99. There is money in the budget for the project to pay it. This just requires your authorization to pay that. All right, is there a motion? So second. It's been moved and suck it, and I'll wait for Ms. Uh, Commissioner Hambrick to get back up here before we take a vote. And while she's coming, are there any questions? <coughs> Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The board will now hear public comments. Citizens will be given three minutes maximum time limit to speak before the Board of Commissioners. Please state your name and county of residency for the record. Speak clearly into the microphone and speakers should be courteous, respectful, and not make any disparaging remarks or use abusive language when addressing the board. Dr. Henry Anderson. Mr. Chair, let me just say real quick, I, I'm sorry, but I did just get a message um, say, from my neighbors that called me, it's very urgent, so I've got to step out just a second. Dr. Anderson, sorry. Henry Anderson, unincorporated Clayton County, Hampton, Georgia. Good evening. After my last public comment in which I presented the crime statistics in unincorporated <coughs> Clayton County as well as all of Clayton County for 2017 with comparisons to 2016, 2015, and how in covering the first three crime categories, which were larcenies, aggravated assaults, and motor vehicle thefts, I gave statistical empirical data and numbers on how crime had increased in the last three year period for both unincorporated Clayton County and all of Clayton County. The Chief of Police of the Clayton County Police Department, Kevin Roberts, along with his Deputy Police Chief of Field Operations Command, Brian Danikas, and his Deputy Police Chief of Support Operations Command, Bruce Parks, met with me to voice their strong concerns that although my crime statistics and numbers were accurate and correct, my strong commentary, however, was very much incorrect in that I gave the impression that for at least an unincorporated Clayton County, which is under the jurisdiction and control of the Clayton County Police Department, that crime in 2018 continued to increase when in fact it had already started to decrease and Chief Roberts showed me the crime statistics and numbers verifying this. I'm pleased to state that crime in 
and unincorporated Clayton County in 2018 is on a decrease across the board compared to 2017, and that the Clayton County Police Department, under the leadership authority and command of our Chief of Police, Kevin Roberts, who was promoted to chief earlier this year on Tuesday, January 16, 2018, and the entire Clayton County Police Department are working together very hard, tirelessly, in concert, synergy, and in full commitment mode to ensure that crime and criminal activity will continue its downward trending for this entire year, 2018. For the first seven months, January to July time period of 2018, the larceny crime rate has decreased by 1.5% with 2,685 incidences committed to date, down from 2,725 in the same time period in 2017, which is a numerical decrease of 40. The aggravated assault crime rate has decreased by 7.4 percent, with 411 incidences committed to date, down from 444 in that same time <coughs> period in 2017, which is a numerical decrease of 33. And the motor vehicle theft crime rate has decreased by 17.1 percent, with 643 incidences committed to date, down from 776 in the same time period in 2017, which is a numerical decrease of 133. I will continue to give the crime statistical information, empirical data numbers on all of the eight major crime categories for unincorporated Clayton County, as well as all of Clayton County. However, for unincorporated Clayton County, I will include the 2018 crime numbers to date to show the decreases that our own Clayton County Police Department have made as they continue to maintain and build on their successes for the rest of 2018 and ensure a, continued, a continuous downward trending of the crime rate in unincorporated Clayton County at the next Clayton County Board of Commissioners regular business meeting. Good day. Starla Weeks. Starla, no, sorry. Starla, Starla Weeks. <coughs> The last time I was here, I was kind of cut short when you called some of them for me, or I called me, then come back and uh, uh, I sat down while they Y'all stop the clock. The time was up. Stop the clock. <laughs> stop the clock. <laughs> State your name, and then we'll start over, sir. Okay. I'm Starlin Weeks. Uh, the last time I was here, you called my name to come speak, and then you called somebody else's name you'd overlooked, and so I sat back down for them to speak, and then when they got through speaking, the time was up. Could I have a couple extra minutes tonight? Kind of no, make sir. Up <laughs> Good try, though, but no, sir. <laughs> well, y'all listen fast, but I got to talk fast to get it in. It's, we, we, we're talking 25, 30 years worth of stuff here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, could you please state Clayton your county, county of residency? Nine years ago, there was an air designated. State you. your county of residency, please. Ma'am? County of residency. But county of residency. Clayton. He lives in Clayton. He lives in Clayton. I, I, Go I, ahead. I, Go ahead and proceed, sir. Your time had didn't start. All right, when I moved to Clayton County about 39 years ago, there was an area designated as a natural buffer between commercial and residential where I live. After Chick-fil-A built along Tara Boulevard and operated for a while, they wanted more parking, so Clayton County allowed them to use the designated buffer area and turn it into a parking lot. The county never asked me my thoughts and probably never considered the negative effect that it would have on me. Now I'm being persecuted and prosecuted because I'm protesting those effects. The same county that gave away my protection is now prosecuting me because of the problem with cleaning up these multi-billion dollar people's garbage in my yard. The county or Chick-fil-A should be cleaning up the garbage in my yard so I could cut my grass without filling my yard with trash confetti. When Chick-fil-A came to build a parking lot, my wife happened to look out the window and saw men walking around in our yard with straw pegged down and a big bulldozer stepping out there. And so she walked out to ask them what's going on. When she got out there, asked him what was going on, the man from Chick-fil-A said, I'm in charge out here, you get back in the house. He harassed her and sent her back in the house crying. She was in her own yard, and they were too. When I came home from work, my wife, while crying, told me what happened. I went outside to have a look around, and the man was to build the parking lot, was waiting for me. He told me the same story that my wife had just told me, and he also told me that he had waited for me to come home because he wanted him, me to know that he had nothing to do with the way my wife was treated. He also told me he told Chick-fil-A they would have to get a, a survey done on the property before he would start grading for the parking lot. Mr. Truett Cathy died without even making an effort to correct that mistake to the best of my knowledge. A few uh, years back, I called Bubba Cathy and told him again about how the garbage problem was affecting me. So he sent over his personal assistant to look over the garbage problem they had created. He came, he listened, he laughed, he left. 
The county official tell me to catch, told me to catch the people throwing out the garbage on the road and turn them in and they didn't handle it. So I did. I caught a police. That was a, a, a bittersweet experience. From this I learned and met some great officers and others would just flat out lie. About a year and a half ago, I went to see the folks that clean up around the county. I complained about the garbage problem Clayton County and my dear neighbors had caused, and the officer said, let me explain something to you. Chick-fil-A is a major corporation, and you're just a homeowner. I'll admit I'm not a bull to be in there, but I shouldn't be treated, I should be treated equal under the law, and I'm not cheap enough to force others to pick up my garbage I made money from. I would also like to say to the code enforcement folks, Clayton County has the people that cut the grass on the roadside. They have them to pick up the garbage before they cut the grass. So does the state of Georgia, so do I. However, the code folks tell me if I don't want to pick up the garbage left by Chick-fil-A and their customers, cut the grass anyway. Uh, I, I, I don't want confetti all over my yard for uh, styrofoam cups. And stuff. And Sir, your time is up again. Sorry? You can feel free to come. Your time is up. You can feel free to come back and continue next week, I mean next meeting. I, I can have 15 seconds and I'll be through. No, sir, time's up. Thank you. Timothy Vondale Jefferson. Good evening, Chairman, uh, Commissioners. Timothy Vondale Jefferson, Unincorporated, Clayton County. I am, uh, I guess I'm addressing this to uh, Commissioner Gregory and Commissioner Hambrick. I am a frequent visitor to the Development Authority meetings uh, to watch as we try to move forward in the spirit of excellence. And I was quite disturbed at the last meeting uh, last Tuesday where Chairman Edmondson was presiding. And there was quite a few issues that uh, came to light, but uh, the number one issue that, that really disturbed my spirit was uh, Two years ago, I spoke with the chairman about creating the international ball. Last year, we were very successful. We raised 21000 for Gigi's house. And this year, Motherless Daughters Foundation is the beneficiary for October 6 of 2018. And in light of that, uh, having gone to the Atlanta Mass Ball and 1,500 to 2,000 citizens and department heads, uh, they really shine in promoting their city. The development authority, sir, you as a chairman, I think missed an opportunity to be a significant sponsor, and you stated to me that this was not a sanctioned event by the BOC. You're absolutely correct. However, this was an opportunity for you guys to showcase and to partner with existing companies, such as Gate Gourmet, Mr. Steve Shaw, Southern Region Hospital, Ms. Charlotte Dupree, Toto, William Strain, the Clorox Company, Paul Unitas, Chime Solution, Ms. Wilson. All of these other entities, you could have sponsored and invited them to this function to be intentional and deliberate on retention and especially on economic growth. Sir, as the chairman of that authority, with the petty politics and the spirit that you have, this community cannot grow. Currently, Georgia Power refused to do business with Clayton County because of your presence on that board. Currently, it is unthinkable. The Chamber of Commerce wants you off that board. So you are hindering the growth with the petty politics that continue. So Commissioner Hambrick and Commissioner Gregory, as you continue to side with Mr. Edmondson on his transition out, I suggest that you thoroughly maybe come to one of the development authority meetings and see the incompetence in action. It is so embarrassing that they're supposed to represent the economic growth. They have taken a department and abolished it, and they're not even prepared to receive the employees at hand. So with that stated, Chairman, uh, we as citizens respectfully ask for your resignation as the Chairman of the Development Authority. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mickey Garber. <clears throat> Mickey. 
Nikki Garber, Unincorporated Rex, Georgia. The topic of my conversation today is the trash and litter problem we have in our county. I will not talk about the problem because we have all done that and we are all are aware of its existence. I am bringing I am bringing possible solutions to our problem other than your mandatory garbage pickup, which this board tried to convince the citizens was the only solution. We all have some degree of guilt contributing to our problem. However, let me bring some things to your attention for consideration to lead to a decrease of our litter problem. Let me ask you, Commissioner Gregory, let me ask you, respectfully, Chairman Turner, let me ask you, Commissioner Hambrick, let me ask you, Commissioner, what was your name again? <laughs> Edmondson, have you ever watched a garbage truck, whether residential or commercial? I see that you're using commissioner discretion and you're not going to answer that question. But let me tell you all, I have watched garbage trucks both residential and commercial. Part of our problem are the garbage trucks picking up the garbage and dumping it in there and paper falls on the ground. That is the residential place. Also residential garbage, Miss Hambrick, they ride down the road and some <coughs> blows out before it's compacted for speed and efficiency, and some garbage blows out. Commercial, the big trucks come up to the big bin, lift it up, shake it a half a dozen times, and it all doesn't go into the box. It sits there on top, they take off, and it blows off the truck. We have to approach this problem of our garbage on a multifaceted scale and everybody is complicit in the crime. Let me, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Are there any questions? No, you're Thank good. You. All right, Madam Clerk, that concludes public comment. And with that being said, the end of the uh, meeting is at hand, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous.